Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, grace and peace to you from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. There is so much skepticism in our world today. People have been tricked and deceived so many times that sometimes they just don't seem to want to believe in anything anymore. Sometimes, even when they're in a time of deepest need or crisis in their lives, when they hear the message of God's love for them, perhaps their only response is, oh, if if only I could believe that. Well, the Bible comes into our world of disbelief with God's truth. Jesus Christ, the King, the Judge, will come again in heavenly glory. Listen to the words Jesus says. When the Son of Man comes in his glory and all the angels with him, he will sit on his glorious throne. All the nations will be gathered in his presence. Yes, the King is coming in heavenly glory. Notice that Jesus, who first came as a humble baby in Bethlehem, in that far out-of-the-way place of, of no reputation, this Jesus is coming again, but this time in glory. This is the great truth that Jesus shares with us today in our gospel. And this truth is absolutely certain. Listen to Jesus' words again. When the Son of Man comes, when he comes, there is no question about it, no if. It is a fact. Life may go along for us just fine, or perhaps life is for us an uphill battle every day, fighting and struggling. But the fact remains, Jesus will come again. And when Jesus comes again, it will be in all of his glory as God. At his first coming, he came in lowly humility. He was born in a stable, a barn, and a manger, a a feeding trough for animals was his first baby's crib. But when he comes the second time, it will be in great glory. No Hollywood scriptwriter or stage designer could ever dream up a scene that truly reflects the reality of the glory with which Jesus will return again. He will come in a, a great show of light and brilliant splendor and majesty. And adding to that glorious sight will be a host of angels all around him. Just think of Jesus as he comes with all his angels in glory, and that fills us with such eager anticipation for that day. When Jesus comes again, he will be surrounded by the whole host of heaven. What a sight it will be when Jesus returns with the company of that whole mighty army of those mighty angels. And by the way, did you catch that word in our reading, the word all? It says, all the angels with him. This is truly a statement about Jesus' glory, the whole heavenly host. Get ready for an amazing sight on that day. Sometimes people say, oh, you can never surprise me. I won't be amazed at anything. I've seen it all. Oh, no, you haven't. Not until you see Jesus returning with that host of angels. That sight will be out of this world. And then our text says that he will sit on his glorious throne and all nations will be gathered in his presence. All nations will be assembled there before Jesus on his throne. Every person of all time throughout the whole world. And what is the purpose for which they are assembled there before the throne of Jesus? To be judged. All people will appear before Jesus, the great king and judge of all. That is also a part of his glory. His coming will be sudden and surprising. At first, 
that might seem frightening to us, but actually it is a wonderful truth for us. By the power of God's Spirit, may this truth fill our hearts with anticipation, eager longing and expectation for that day to come. May we be spurred on by this truth to be ready for that day when Jesus returns. As God's people, redeemed by the blood of Jesus, we live now each day of our lives with that eternal perspective in view. God's word has great truths for us. And here is another truth. Jesus, the king, has a message for us. The first part of that message that Jesus gives in our reading for today is this. On the day of his returning, all people will be separated into two groups. He will put the sheep on his right hand and the goats on his left hand. Well, let's get right to the point of all of that. Here we are shown that there are really only two kinds of people. When Jesus comes on Judgment Day, he will make it clear what those two kinds of people are. Those two kinds of people are believers and unbelievers, acceptors of God's truth and rejectors of God's truth. There is no in-between. There is no maybe. Either a person believes in the truth of God and for Jesus' sake, by the power of the Holy Spirit, is made a child of God through faith in Jesus, or a person is an unbeliever who says, I don't believe it. I don't want it. I don't think that message is real. I don't buy it. And that person goes to everlasting hell. There are only two kinds, believers and unbelievers. And our prayer is that by God's amazing grace, we will be numbered now and always among the believers who are destined for eternal life. And in fact, we are confident that that is the case because of Jesus, our Savior. Take a look at what our reading before us today says about the acceptors of God's truth, about believers, those who are righteous in God's sight through faith in Jesus. That is what verses 35 and 36 of our reading are all about. Jesus, the king, says, For I was hungry, and you gave me food to eat. I was thirsty, and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger, and you welcomed me. I was lacking clothes, and you clothed me. I was sick, and you took care of me. I was in prison, and you visited me. The works of faith of those believers are recognized. Believers feed the hungry and give drink to the thirsty. They care for strangers. They give clothes to the needy. They visit the sick and they remember those in prison. These are some examples of how true faith lives. This is how faith shows itself. Faith designs good works to do. In Matthew chapter 5, verse 16, we have Jesus' words, Let your light shine before men, that they may see your good deeds and praise your Father in heaven. Good works are a part, a natural part, of every believer's life. They're like a light drawing people's attention to God and to God's love at work in our lives. In the book of James, chapter 2, verse 18, we read, I will show you my faith by what I do. That is what Jesus says is this great truth for you and for me. When Jesus comes again, he will reveal the faith of all of his followers by their good works. The point is that if there is true faith in a person's heart, there will be good works in their life as a natural result. Well, what does Jesus say then about the rejectors of the truth, about unbelievers? He says that they also will be recognized, but for their lack of good works. In verses 42 and 43 of our reading, everything that the believers did, that Jesus or the king in our reading re recounts, that king and judge 
also recounts that the unbelievers did not do. As the Apostle James also says in chapter 2, faith by itself, if it is not accompanied by action, is dead. What a truth that is for you and for me to take to heart. It takes more than just words to show our faith. Words of faith saying, I believe in Jesus, I believe in God, must be demonstrated by actions of faith. When we say we believe in Jesus as our Savior, when we acknowledge God as our Lord, we are to show it through our actions and our lives. The proof is in our love for God's word and for his commands. The proof is in our love for each other. The proof is in our help for others. The proof is in our giving to God and to others. Faith does not stand alone. Where there is faith, there is always action. So the king's message is, all people will be divided into two groups. They are either believers or unbelievers. And when he comes, Jesus will announce the verdict. Amazement will fill every heart. The believers, as well as the unbelievers, will all be totally amazed. They can't figure it out. Both groups of people say to the Lord, when did we ever have opportunity to do those things for you? And then the master responds, whatever you did for the least of these brothers and sisters of mine, you did for me. There is the word for the unbelievers, for the unrighteous. Whatever you did not do for the least of these, you did not do for me. You avoided serving others, and so you have also avoided serving me. You had no faith, and so there could therefore be no works to demonstrate your faith. That is the verdict. And to the believers in verse 40, he says, Truly I say to you, whatever you have done for the least of these brothers of mine, you have done for me. And there it is. The good works of believers are opportunities to serve Jesus. Caring for those who are down and out is just like caring for the Lord Jesus himself. What a way for our Lord to encourage us as he looks at our little acts of love, our little words of love and service and kindness. And he says, look, through your faith, you are doing all of those things for me. All of those things are a service to me. In the judgment of Jesus, our cheerful giving and our sharing with others is a demonstration of our Christian faith. Jesus says that in faith, you do all of those things for me. That truth offers great encouragement to all believers. See how Jesus elevates the Christian's good works as good works done for him. And now we are ready for the real verdict of Jesus. Let's look at verse 41. It says, Then he will say to those on his left, Depart from me, you who are cursed, into the everlasting fire prepared for the devil and his angels. There is the judgment for unbelievers. Depart. Leave me. Go away to everlasting condemnation. You are apart from God forever. May God in his grace and mercy keep us from such a terrible end. Rather, may God let us be among those who are spoken of in verse 34. There Jesus says to the believers, Come, you who are blessed by my Father in heaven, inherit the kingdom that has been prepared for you before the foundation of the world. What a blessed judgment that is. What a great verdict. What a great truth that is for you and for me. Sometimes we feel discouraged and all down and depressed about
about the activities of our lives and sometimes about our own failures and sins. But here is a great comforting and encouraging truth for us. When the king and judge comes again, all who have received him in faith as their savior will be acknowledged as the inheritors of his eternal kingdom. He will say to them, come, you who are blessed by my Father in heaven. This is the goal that is placed before each one of us. This is our destination. By God's grace, may we reach it safely. And then Jesus, the King and Judge, offers final words to us. He says, And these shall go away into everlasting punishment, but the righteous into eternal life. The unbelievers go into everlasting punishment. That is the final word for them from God. There is no changing it. At that point, it is all over, and there are no second chances. Unbelievers on the last day are condemned to eternal suffering in hell. But the believers go to eternal life, life in God's presence seeing God face to face in all his glory without fear because our sins have been completely removed by Jesus our Savior. At that time, we will, we will be in absolute harmony and peace with God. We will know God. We will see him and be with him. There will only be joy and delight for us in God's presence, and that joy will be unending. We will be safe at home forever with God. That is a great truth for us. Sometimes we meet people who say, there is no tomorrow. We don't need to worry about the future. A lot of people live like that. They say, just do whatever you want because none of it really matters and, and when this life is over, well, that's the end of it and we will just be buried or be turned into ashes, and it doesn't really matter. Some people say they just can't fathom the concept of eternity, and therefore they say because they can't come to grips with what that really means for them, then they don't really believe that it's true. But we have these great truths that Jesus tells us. He is coming again in glory. He has a terrific message for us. He will offer us the best verdict. He will speak up for us in his final words. This is a day of our opportunity. Where are we? Are we with the unbelievers or the believers? Are we without the righteousness of Christ? Or have we by faith accepted Jesus and his word? accepted him as our Savior. Now is the time for each one of us to find out. Plead with God the Holy Spirit to lead you to repentance, to lead you to a trusting faith in Jesus as the Savior, to lead you to new life, and then to continue in that new life. May Jesus bless us and be with us and preserve us in true faith in him so that on that last day we may stand with confidence before him as he calls us to our heavenly home. Amen.